Senator King. Thank you. Uh, I think one of the clearest learnings we've had this morning is the importance of research and the importance of the, the role of the federal government in conducting that research. And again, I, I think, uh, you know, I think of uh, George Mitchell and, the, and fracking and the important, the revolutionary change, and that was supported in some significant measure by Department of Energy Research, changed the world. And I think this is another area. And I, again, uh, I, I think, uh, Madam Chair, this is a place where there could be a profitable combination between the Defense Department and the Department of Energy because of the important role that this plays with them. Uh, uh, Mr. Crabtree, you, you, you mentioned something in passing that I think deserves emphasis. Rate design and the use of storage of, uh, ba of uh, battery-powered automobiles uh, to absorb excess both capacity, energy, and grid capacity in the nighttime. Uh, the grid I've often characterized as like a church that's built for Christmas morning, uh, and there are a lot of empty pews in February and March uh, because it's literally designed for the hottest, most heavily used day of the year, and it's got to be in order to be reliable. That means there's enormous excess delivery capacity, uh, usually at night, particularly in the winter, and so to the extent we could use rate design to encourage charging of automobiles, or to go further to encourage things like electrothermal storage, heating your water at night. I mean, there are a lot of uses that, that I think, I, I'm old enough to remember when we looked at our watch when it became nine o'clock because the telephone call was cheaper. <laughs> People do change behaviors because of price signals. And right now there's, there's really not a price signal and yet there, there, there ought to be, and it would lead to a much it would lead to a more efficient utilization of the grid without an increase of the capital cost, no new wires or poles, which would lower the cost of distribution and transportation, uh, transmission for everyone because more kilowatt hours divided by the same capital cost. So I think that's a very important point. That's essentially a state level decision. But uh, time of day pricing, I, I think, is a, is, a, is a very important part of this uh, uh, this solution. And then finally, Mr. Falk, I, I, I admire your uh, commitment to where you're going, to where you're taking your company, and it's a, a very uh, important uh, step for the country. I, on, the, on the issue of shifting, when we have household solar and, and, and batteries, I think the important question there is we got to be very precise about the value of what you're getting versus what it's costing. In other words, it's not a dead loss. There are values to the utilities. There's a national security value in terms of the distribution of the, of the grid so that if one plant or one transmission center doesn't go down, the whole grid doesn't go down. Um, there are carbon avoidance values. Um, resiliency, peak shaving, all of those things. So I, I understand, but I, but I just want to be sure the equation is, is on both sides, that the, that the value question is, is not just what's the cost, are we loading these costs onto other consumers, what, what are also the benefits? And that I think that, that's an important part of this uh, consideration because there are places in the country where utilities have placed, I think, exorbitant penalties to discourage the development of distributed energy uh, that are really unjustified by the true uh, uh, cost equation. So um, I, I just, I think this is uh, uh, so in incredibly important and I commend the panel and the chair. <clears throat> this has been a very important hearing. I look forward to continuing the discussion. To the extent any of you have follow-up thoughts, I hope you will submit them to the committee for our, uh, our consideration. But uh, thank you all for the, for the work that you're doing. Mr. Davidson, thank you for the work you do in Maine. Uh, I think you have a six or seven hundred megawatts of hydropower in Maine. It's an important part of our uh, energy resource, and uh, uh, I appreciate your your company's engagement with uh, businesses and entities in in our state. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator.